if you're going to evolve into having a dressage type of horse, you'll probably want to go to a German training snaffle. All right, so while we're talking about the dressage, if you are fortunate enough to be able to work up through all the levels, so pre-training level, training first, second, third, fourth, look at about a year for each level, look at the fact that there's all sorts of things that will prevent you and your horse from going up the next level, the next level. But if you're able to keep going up the levels, you're gonna get into the FEI levels, the pre-St. George levels, you have to wear a double bridle. It's tradition, you have to wear a double bridle. So once you get into the FEI levels, you have to wear a double bridle, and I just went and grabbed mine. So here's my double bridle, all right? Now, um, this needs to be over there. Okay, so it's dusty <laughs> because I don't have any horses that I'm riding a double bridle in. Um, you can ride an FEI horse if you can ride them in a simple snaffle all the way up through and do your pee off and your passage and your canter pirouettes and your one tempies and the whole dang thing in a snaffle. Rock on more power to you, right? But if you're going to compete, you got to be in a double. So this is our standard double, guys. This is a dressage bridle. It's a double bridle. Both bits go in the horse's mouth. Very bizarre, I know, but it's true. All right? So this is called a bradoon. It's a snaffle, but you call it a bradoon because the ring is smaller, because you have all this equipment. You know what I mean? So the ring on a bradoon is smaller than the ring on a regular loose ring snaffle. It doesn't have to be a loose ring, but I think this is the most traditional one. I like it the most. This is called a Burdoon. Now, if you have a pony or a smaller horse, you can use the Burdoon as their snaffle. And it looks really nice because the rings are smaller, right? And then this is the curved part. So they call this a Wymouth, if you want the fancy name for it. Or you can call it a curb. All right, this section's gonna take a few minutes. So if you're not a dressage person, Fast forward. <laughs> but if you are a dressage person, this is going to take a moment because I want to talk about the curves or the Wymouth. So you use a regular Cavasin with the double bridle. All right, just a regular nose band. All right, and this is called the Wymouth and it has a chain. Okay, so this is the quote unquote severe part of the double bridle. Anytime you have a shank, it's much more influential and much more severe. That's why none of my bits have our shanked bits. Um, you have to you have to ride in a double. So what I do is I choose the Wymouth, the curb that is the least severe. All right. Let me tell you how you know. This is called the port. You want as low a port as possible. The higher the port, the more severe. There you go. How easy is that? So in the Western bridles or in the double bridles, the ports sometimes go way up to year. They're just monsters. The higher the port, the more severe. Stick with the low port if you can. The longer the shank, the more severe. Stick with the shortest shank you can find. Those are hard and fast rules across the board. Western people, pay attention. A lot of the Western riders do ride in shanked bits. A lot of the, um, the Western disciplines require a shanked bit to compete. You gotta have it. A lot of Western riders feel like uh, you can't really ride a horse one-handed properly unless you're riding them in what I call a full bridle, a shanked bit. I try not to. The shorter the shank, the less severe. The longer the shank, the more severe. There you go, you have it. Um, across the board, the lower the port, the less severe, the shorter the shank, the less severe, and it does have a curb chain. And it's just part of riding with a uh, curb bit. So when you, I'm not going to put the double on anybody because none of my horses right now are wearing doubles, but it's a standard dressage bridle and the double bit, meaning the Bradoon with the Wymouth and double reins, so you're riding with uh, four reins, two reins on each side. I'm not going to show you how to carry them. It's not important right now. It's not important for my training program, so I'm not going to 
talk about that. If we end up with an upper level horse that's in a double, I'll talk about holding four reins, all right? So there you go, there's your double bridle. So this is for the most advanced of the dressage horses. And if you can go all the way up and through Grand Prix with a German training snaffle or with a regular snaffle bit, if you have to compete, use the least severe bit that you possibly can. And oh, just another tip about the doubles. If you want, you can just ride on the snaffle. So what I do when I'm riding on a double is I connect the horse on the snaffle and then I try to leave the curb rein as loose as possible. So really, even though the curb is in their mouth, you're really riding on the Bredouin, preferred. Okay, so there's that.